are guides, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah We are kings demanding change Cause we believe we can Grandfather. So who, who is his grandfather? Uh, who is your grandfather? Black. Black. So, yeah. all right. You come from the uh, uh, you come from uh, uh, Judah, from the tribe of Judah. Right. That, that, that's the same tribe Christ came from. That's right. You understand, you understand that, right? Ooh. So let, let, let's let's get uh, Hebrews seven and fourteen real quick. Because I'm gonna show you something, uh, Leo. Because because if you say that that your your, your great grandfather is from uh, when well, he's so called American black. That means he comes from the tribe of Judah. That's right. You understand right. that? So read, read uh, Hebrews 7 and 14. We're going to see who else came from the tribe of Judah. Because that's a great, that's a great tribe. Read. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So our Lord, Jesus the Christ, sprang out of Judah. He said, the, the scripture says it is evident. That means there, there is evidence that Christ sprang out from the tribe of Judah. That's right. So now I get, uh, give me Jeremiah uh, 14 and 2 real quick. Bring it out. Because what I want to show you, Leo, is I want to show you the color of the tribe to prove to you that the uh, that the American blacks, the so-called American blacks, are Judah. That's hey. right. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Bring it out. Judah mourning in the gates thereof languish. Three. They are black unto the ground. See, Judah is black unto the ground. That means that they, the, the so-called people that's over there in the land today, how did how did Judah or Israel or the Jews, how did they leave Israel and black. come back white? How did black. they leave black and come back white? Right, bring it out. So so you, you, so you understand what I'm saying, right? You know? So now, now, now I gotta ask you, Leo, why are our people in the conditions that we are in today? Give me give me some response. I wanna know what, what's on your mind right now. Well, I mean, how, there's whole stuff about curves or whatever. Okay. I, you know, so I, I've heard about it. I've heard different versions of it. So. Okay, you, you've heard different versions. Yeah. So give me, give me the best perception that you can give me. So I, you said a curse. I, I can only speak. I, I, okay. Okay. That's not a problem. <laughs> that's why we're here. We're here to, to help you get a, a clear point view of the reason why we're here. Right. The reason why our people are on the bottom. <laughs> give me Deuteronomy 28, and let's start off at verse 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Bring it out. And they shall be upon thee for a son and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the scripture says they. The they that is talking about is the curses. The curses will be upon us and our seed for a sign and for a wonder. What is this building right here, Romeo? What is this building that I'm pointing at right here? What is that building? That building says a, a name on it. What does that name say? Uh, the, 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 no, under it. Oh, the Youth Fit. The Youth Fit. <laughs> the Youth Fit Health Club. Yeah. That's that's a place to do what? Do you go in, uh, Do you go out? And, is that a restaurant? Do you eat? Do you eat there? What do you do there? I mean, you just work out. You work out. So how do you know you work out there? Because of the sign, right? Yeah. Right. So now the Bible is telling you that these curses and these uh, are, will be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. 
So now these curses are on our people. The reason why we're on the bottom today is to so as a signifying marker to show you, you know, who you are according to God. That's right. right. You understand that? Yeah. So now it's showing you that those people that are in your land are fakes. They're fakes because they they don't fit none of these curses. We're gonna. Huh? Okay, the, uh, uh, from, from, from uh, uh, Georgia, uh, from yeah. Georgia, Russia, in the Caucasus Mountains, right? So, um, so let, let, let's let's get a scripture for you real quick. Go ahead, Lord, get what you got, Daniel nine and eleven. Jump, actually, jump to verse twelve. Daniel chapter nine and verse twelve. Bring it out. And he hath confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. So Leo, the, the, the he that is talking about is talking about the Most High God, has confirmed his words that he spoke against us which we're reading in Deuteronomy. We're gonna to touch on what he spoke against us in a little bit, read. By breaking upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. So nobody on the face of this earth went through what we went through, Leo. Right. right. Nobody, nobody has went through what we, what we went through. Go ahead and pick that up. So no, nobody has went through what, what we went through on the face of this earth, right, Leo? Right. So I you gotta understand that the shoe fits, wear it. Yeah, so I've, I've read that about thou shall be so uh, so to thy enemy. Uh huh. Yeah. So 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 you, you you know about all of this. So uh, so now you know the tribe that you're from. Yeah. Okay. So do you know exactly the the mode of transportation our people yeah, was, yeah, that they used to bring our people? Uh, was it airplane? Did you swim? How did we get? Uh, okay. Oh shit. So you read that. Right. So all right. So you read these things and now you know it. All right. So. Oh, yeah. go, Okay, go back to Deuteronomy. So now, now what I what I got, what I'm gonna ask you now, Leo, is so you know you're Israel, you know you know you're from the tribe of Judah. So uh, now, hold on, let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? Uh, I mean, I always put, I always say a black. But According to God, what's your nationality? Oh, Judah, I guess. All praise, all praise. All praise. <laughs> so so you so you know that you're from the tribe of Judah. Right. So now, Leo, what we need you to do, you need, we need you to wake up and come to this side. Oh. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 first. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6 because I want to show you something, Leo. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it up. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's so, right. Leo, uh, if you're above all people on the face of the earth, are you equal? Are you beneath? So, no, I'm asking, are you beneath or are you equal? Because the Bible just said you're above all people on the face of the earth. Oh, okay. So, should we not be walking like that? Should we not walk how God tell, how God tell us to walk? Because he tell us that the Israelites are special people. We're above all people on the face of the earth. That's right. In order to be that, we must walk like that. We can't continue to walk and blend in with the rest of the world. Romans 12 and 2. We cannot do that. Because if we do that, therefore we are no longer special. That's right. Therefore we're no longer holy. Therefore up. we're no longer set apart right. how God has intended us to be. Right. Right. That's why we got to walk how God commanded us. You up. understand? Read that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Bring it up. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. Uh, right. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You, you heard this information before. You know that you're in Israel. You know that you got it. You know that you have to repent. You have to change your ways. And the only way to do that is by conforming your mind to God's word, That's not right. to the world. Right, right. We can't do that if we're conformed to the world, bro. Bring it out. Bring it out. We need you on this side, bro. Our people are suffering. The 12 tribes on this side are suffering. We need all our brothers to wake up, bro, and to come on this side. Finish that off. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So that we may prove the, the, the things that God has given to Israel so that way we can be a walking beacon. So now we're going to get some laws to show you how you can be the walking beacon. First and foremost, Hebrews 10 and 25 first. Because one thing you got to do, Raymond, is once you know this information, you can't be in solitude by yourself. You can't be alone. You have to, con you have to congregate. You have to contact your brothers that, that know this information and know this truth. Have you ever heard of birds of a feather flock together? Bro, you are like, you look like my older brother. You look like my older brother. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm talking to you like I'm talking to my brother right now, bro. All right. 
You birds of a feather flock together, bro. You cannot be in the world saying that you know this truth. It don't look right. It, it don't fit. It's like a mismatched piece to the puzzle. Right. It don't work. Peace right? Uh, read that. Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hurry up. That forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So we can't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Once you know this information, you have to come together with like-minded people. Right. That's the only way we're going to be able to build this kingdom. That's right. Because Christ said the kingdom was within you. Right. You can't pull the kingdom out of you if you by yourself. Right. Whoa. We have to gather ourselves together, bro. Teach them up. In holiness and righteousness. We have to do these things. If we don't do these things, bro, we that, that means we love our people to be oppressed. Right. Leviticus 21, verse 5. One thing, one thing, man, it starts off with you. It starts off with yourself. You understand? So now read read on Leviticus 21 and verse 5. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Check it out. They shall not make boldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So, when that's a law for the men in Israel. We cannot shave off the corners. We cannot shave off our, shave our hair bald. Nor can we shave off the corners of our beard. You understand? Your beard, your beard, the corner of your beard starts right here. You understand? And it, and, it, and, it, and it ends all the way to the other side. So you, the little chin strap you got, you can't do that. You can, you can tape up, but you can't bring it, you can't cut into the line. You understand what I'm saying? Because right now, that's sin. Did you know that? I mean, it's not I mean, all right, that's fine if it don't grow. And I'll patch you too. I got a patch right there. I got a patch right here. It don't, it don't, it don't grow. But, hey, but that's fine, bro. I'm telling you, it's some brothers in the congregation. They got strings of hair, but they don't shave it. They leave it on because they, they love God, and they're keeping God's law. That's right. You understand that? So do you understand that, that the, do you understand sin according to the Bible? So you want to, what is sin? Anything that opposes the word of God. Okay. All right. I, I'll take that. Anything that opposes the word of God or go against the word of God is sin. All right, let's read it. Let's read it according to the Bible. Uh, first John three and four. First John chapter three and verse four. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. See, sin is the transgression of the law. Romans six twenty three. Because, oh, Raymond, let me ask you a question. You working, right? You work. You got a nine to five, right? So you get paid out. Bye with you, right? No, right? Watch this. Romans 6, all oh, 6. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Bring it out. For the wages of sin is death. So the wages. So what, what is it called when you get paid? It's called your wage, right? So the wages of sin is death. So we just read what sin was. It's the breaking of God's law. Right. So you understand that the payment for, your, for breaking God's laws is what? Death. The Bible just said it. The wages of sin is death. So uh, eventually your wages is gonna come. Oh, yeah. So eventually death will come if you continue to break God's laws. That's right. So you understand this, right? So you cannot you cannot continue to break God's laws, right? You gotta you gotta gather yourself together, you gotta congregate, you gotta come into God's uh, uh, to God's assembly, to, to his holy assembly. You can't be shaving your face, you can't be doing these things. I'm gonna read to you, give me a second, there's just what is it, 13 to 14? Um put 14 to 14. Because uh, I'm gonna tell you exactly what God calls it. Because God calls that a certain thing. We're gonna find out right now. And uh, and, and, and you know what? You you would like to call yourself a man, right? I mean, we all men out here. We all would like to call ourselves men, but we're gonna find out according to uh, according to God what it, what it said. Second Ezra, chapter fourteen and verse fourteen. Start off at thirteen. Verse thirteen. Now therefore, set thine house in order. So now, Raymond, God is saying, set your house in order. First, first and foremost, your body is your house. So you got to set yourself in order. He's talking about yourself first. Right. Then if you're married, you got to set your house in order. Even if you aren't married, you still got to set your house in order. Are you married? No? All right. Well, you got to set yourself in order. Right? Read. And reprove thy people. And then correct your people. That means you got yourself in order. You stop shaving your beard. You stop shaving yourself uh, around, around, your, around, you know, getting the zero in the back. You know, stop getting the fade. You start congregating. You start building yourself up. Then God says, "What?" And we prove thy people. So after you set yourself in order, you have to correct your people. You have to come on this side 
and correct your people. Right. Tell them where their faults are at. Tell them where they're sinning at. You have to know the sin in order to call it out. You can't call out the sin if you don't know it, if you don't know where, where, where to find it, right. how to correct it. You understand? According to God. Right. Read. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. See, comfort them that are of such that are being in trouble. How are you going to be able to comfort a brother that's, that's thinking about committing suicide? According to God's words. How, what if a brother comes to you and give you these things and you and you don't know what to tell him? According to God. You understand? So you got to know how to do these. You got to build yourself up. That's why, that's why God is saying set yourself in order first. Read. And now renounce corruption. And now renounce corruption. That means turn away from the evil things of the world. Re remember when you talked about renewing your mind? Not according to the world, but according to God's words. Read. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. What are some mortal thoughts? Let me ask you a question. I, I, I'm going to give you an example of a mortal thought. I'm, I'm going to give you an example of a mortal thought, and then, you, and then you give me some more. Uh, a mortal thought would be, dang, I can't wait to get off work so I can go roll up that joint and get high. Right. That's a mortal thought. Bring it out. Right? So now give me a mortal thought. You can't wait. Perfect. You can't wait to go bust a lick. And that's exactly why God said a man must work. So he don't have to go through. Those thoughts have to go through his mind. Right. So do you understand that God's laws are perfect? God commands a man to work. So that way that thought don't have to go through his mind to go bust a lick. Right. God commands that a man does not destroy his temple. That, that, that rolling up that joint, smoking that joint, that's what I used to do. You feel what I'm saying? So once I heard that commandment, I had to let it go. I had to say, you know what, I can't smoke no more. Right. Because God is going to destroy me if I continue to smoke. You understand that? Okay. So that is what that is what setting yourself in order means. And then you could go on the street and teach people to stop smoking, to stop busting licks. Right. You understand? Because you stopped it. Okay. That's the only way you can do that. Because if you don't, you are therefore called an hypocrite. Right. Right? Read. Cast away the burdens of men. These are burdens of men. You understand? That's a burden of men. When you want to hit licks and go, go roll up joints and smoke and get high, that's a burden of men. I'm going to tell you how that's a burden of men. Because the rolling of the joint and getting high is only temporary. That's only covering up my troubles. That's temporary. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, right. That's only making me think that, damn, damn you know what? I, only, I, I need this joint so that way I can be happy. But in actuality, what I'm telling God is that I don't need him to be happy. I need the joint to be happy. Right. That's, That's right. a burden of man. That's the stress of man. Let's, let's read and see what God calls that. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Put off what? Put off now the weak nature. You see what God calls that? God calls that a weak nature. For you to have to go through that in your mind, for you have to, to submit to the lust of smoking weed, or to submit to the lust of trying to go uh, rob another uh, your brother, or to submit into some type of wickedness in the world, going to lay down with another sister that you're not married with, Pouring out another sister, that's a weak nature. Right. God calls that weak. Right. That's you right. understand? That's why we have to build ourselves up in God's word. That's, that's right. right. We have to become what God calls us to be. First Kings 2 and 2. Yeah. Bring it out. We have to become what God calls us. We can no longer make excuses. Right. We can no longer say, dang, you know what? I know I'm Israel, but dang, I got bills to pay. But dang, oh man, I'm stressing. I got to pop these uh, the, the six pack. So I can feel good. Right. I gotta I gotta roll this joint up so I can feel all right. Right. God said that's a weak nation. Right. We have to wake up, come on this side, put on our fringes, stop shaving our beards, gather ourselves together in order to fight this good fight that is not carnal, it's spiritual. That's why we out here fighting this fight with God's words. Right. We ain't out here putting the gun in your head, Raymond, right. saying you better repent. You're not doing that. Right. We're telling you according to God's words that you better repent. Right. Right? right? Read. First Kings. Chapter 2 and verse 2. Bring it out. And, and otherwise, you, you would be put to death, right? If not now, whenever God whenever God sees fit. You understand? And that's the warning that we come to give our people as well. Read. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. See, see, what, see what showing yourself a man is? We all would like to think of ourselves as men. But if we're not keeping God's laws, God said you're not a man. You're not a man. Right. Just because you're old enough to pay bills, old enough to go to work, just because you got two or three kids running around, God said, that don't make you a man. Right. The keeping of his laws is what makes you a man. Right. Yeah. Because it's easy 
to do evil, Raymond. It's evil. It's easy to do bad, but to keep, but to keep God's laws is a, is a lifelong journey. Right. It's a journey for endurance. You're not a man if you can't endure to the end. It's discipline. Read. To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and with whithersoever thou turnest thyself. See, in order for you to prosper, in order for you to do good according to God, you got to keep his commandments. Right. You got it. You got to walk in his way. Right. You got to do these things. Right. Ezekiel 18 and 30. You got to do these things. You got to repent, bro. You got to. If you say you know who you are, bro, we need you to wake up. Come on the side, bro, and help us fight the fight, bro. Bro, all, all of that thing, all of the excuses in the world can, can come at you at once. But what's most important? Is it God's words or the world? Well, you got a flight? Give him a flight? Oh, you got one? Check, check the back real quick. The address is on the back. The address is on the back for you. So, uh, yeah, check, check that out. We got our address right there. Uh, we got an address and a phone number and everything right there. We got our website. So you can call us and you can reach out to us. Bro. So that way we can, we can continue to, to, to build each other up. Continue to fight for God's laws. And wake our people up. And then eventually the kingdom will come. Right. And then you don't have to go to work no more. Then you don't have to let the stress of the world bog you down. You know, listen to this last scripture real quick. And, we, uh, and then uh, if you got to go, you got to go. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. That's why we have to repent, because God said he will judge us. What, what, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Give me a second. Let me finish with him, and I'm, I'm going to deal with you right now. Read. Everyone, according to his way, says the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. See, God said repent and turn ourselves from all of our transgressions. So the transgressions that we're committing against them now and the things that you know deep down inside that you're doing that you don't tell nobody, that's between you and God. Right. You have to turn away from that. You have to give your whole, you have to give it wholeheartedly your everything in order for, in order for you to truly repent. Right. Right? So iniquity shall not be your ruin. That sin may not be your ruin. We just read that sin is the wages of what? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's, right. that's correct. Dang, and, I, and I love the way that you can recall that, bro. That's amazing. I want you to keep that, bro, because that's the fear of the Lord. Because if you, if you forget that, that the God can put you to death for sinning against him, bro, then that's, that's the end for you, bro. You got you to gotta keep in mind, bro, that this is most important. So if you got to go, bro, give us a call, man. Hey, check us out, man. Hey, hey, I love you, bro. That's why we out here, man. That's why we out here. All right. All right. Thank you, brothers. With that, we'll see the treatment of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter,
Twitter and podcast and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.